I'm always seeking different methods for editing or color grading to improve myself or make my workflow a lot easier. I also really enjoy about trying out new softwares and learn about how they work because I think they are contributing my editing style. So that's why I'm going to show you how to color grade in Filmora 13, which is also the sponsor of today's video. Filmora is an editing software with many innovative features. It is very suitable for social media content creators or complete beginners. If you want to make a quick start in editing or color grading, you can use it easily without any difficulty. Now let's hop onto the computer and take a look at it. It has a very straightforward interface. You can find everything you are looking for here. Let's add some footage to the media pool. Click on import media and bring your footage to the media pool. A warning popped up and asking if we want to create proxy files. I don't need them right now, but you might need them while you are editing. So I recommend absolutely use proxy files. Let's start by putting our footage onto the timeline. Another warning appeared for the timeline resolution. Since my footage is 4K, I'm going to choose the match media option and continue with this. At first glance, everything is very self-explanatory. It is neatly divided into menus. In project media, you have the footage you imported. Below that, there is global media where you can place assets that you will use in every project. Next to it, there is a library of different types of stock footage you can use. There are like many types of stock videos in different categories. So I won't be able to go through all of this. You can even generate images using the AI image generator. I think that's cool. In the audio section, also there are many music and sound effects that you can use on your videos. As you can see in the other sections here, there are so many ready to use titles, transitions and effects. You can explore all of this. By clicking the icon on the top left corner on the timeline, you can access other great features. You can also customize this toolbar to your liking. There are many different AI features in Filmora. I haven't had the chance to try them all, but you should definitely take a look. They also added a menu called filters here. You can access so many LUTs in various categories from here, but I will return to this section later in the tutorial. On the right side, as always, there are properties for the clip. You can make changes from here. Okay, among all the other features, we have come to the part that interests me the most. I have two different types of footage on my timeline. Two are log footages and the other shot directly from the camera without selecting a color profile. I will show you how to color grade them with different methods for both types. Let's start with the log footage. First, click on the icon at the top right corner of the video viewer to open the video scopes. I will expand it and move it to the left. I believe this feature was added recently and I think that's a really good update because I'm going to check my scopes while I'm grading. Then click on the color tab on the right. We will do all the adjustments from here. First, there's a presets menu at the top. We will not use this. We will make all adjustments ourselves, so let's continue. Right below is the LUT menu. There are LUTs here to convert log footage to Rec. 709. You can see the difference by hovering over them with the mouse. Since my footage is shot in S-Log, I'm going to choose S-Log to Rec. 709. But actually, you are not required to choose this one. You can select the LUT that best matches your footage. If you have your own custom LUT, you can also load it here. I adjust the effects strength with the power slider right below. Okay. They added a new feature called Protect Skin Tones. As far as I understand, it protects from harsh light and prevents oversaturating of the skin tones. I'm increasing this slightly, not too much. This is before and this is after. I think it's a quite a good start. Let's continue with the color menu. Here we will adjust the white balance and saturation levels. You can use the eyedropper for white balance, but I prefer to do it manually. Since my footage is more on the warm side, I'm decreasing the temperature. Also, I'm seeing magenta tones overall, so I will move the tint towards green. I'm also checking the scopes while doing this. This is before, this is after. As you can see, we are getting significant results with very small adjustments. Now let's increase the vibrance and saturation levels. Saturation intensifies all the colors in your image. On the other hand, vibrance is focused on the mid-tones of an image. That's the difference between them. 
Okay, let's move on to the light adjustments. I'm increasing the exposure slightly, also paying attention to the upper limit in the scopes. I'm decreasing the brightness, increase the contrast, also decrease the highlights. I'm pulling it down at first, then pushing it up. Let's also lower the shadows. And finally, I'm going to increase the white levels and decrease the black levels. I ensure nothing is clipping in the scope while I'm doing all of this. Okay, I think we are in a very good position. This is before, this is after. Maybe we can increase the brightness a bit. Yeah, much better. At this point, we can also increase the saturation a bit. After these adjustments, I think our footage looks quite balanced. Let's continue downwards. I won't add sharpening, but let's add a vignette. It is useful to draw attention more to the center. You can easily create the effect using the sliders here. But don't forget to feather it. We won't want the effect to be too obvious. This is before, this is after. Great. Our basic adjustments are complete. You can see the before and after comparison by clicking the comparison icon at the top right. I think it's looking pretty good. Let's continue with the HSL menu, which stands for Hue, Saturation and Luminance. Here you can control each color in your footage separately. I won't play much with red and orange tones because it could disrupt the skin tone. I increase the luminance of red a bit. We can also increase the saturation and luminance values on the orange. After this, we can do the same thing with the rest of the colors. If there is a color you want to highlight in your footage, you can do it from here. This is before, this is after. I think it added a bit more flavor to our image. I'm going to return to the light menu and make some more adjustments. Let's not darken the footage too much. Yeah, that's nice. Let's continue with the curse tool. Since we have already made our basic adjustments, I'm not going to make many changes here. We can make a few changes to increase the contrast. To prevent clipping, I'm moving the bottom point up and let's put one point in the shadows move the shadow point down and one in the highlights and then push the highlight point down this is looking good for now i'm switching to the red channel i'm going to only move the button point to reduce the red tones in the shadow areas it will have a big impact with the small move this is before this is after as you can see we achieved a very different mood with very small changes let's continue with the color wheels here you can give different color tones separately to the highlights, midtones, or shadows. Actually, I'm happy with my result, so I won't change much here as well. This is before, this is after. All right, I think that's enough. Finally, let's return to the basic settings. Let's save this grade as a custom from the bottom. You can give it any name you want. After this, you can find this grade later in the custom presets. Then you can apply this to your other footages as well. Okay, now let's look at the non-lock footage. Earlier, I showed you the filter collection. This time, I'm going to proceed by using one of them. Select a lot from this library that looks good to you or matches the style that you want. I want to use this Joker LUT, drag and drop it onto the timeline as a new layer. So quick tip, no matter what LUT you are using, it usually works well about 5% of the time when you first apply it. So that's why we need to make adjustments to suit our own image. I will lower the opacity of the LUT to about 50%, then I will make color and light adjustments to the image. I want my image to be a bit warmer, so I'm quickly adjusting the white balance and saturation. Then, by using the light settings, I'm increasing the contrast to make the image more vibrant. After that, with the HSL, I'm emphasizing orange and blue colors because they are more prominent in this clip. This is before, this is after. As you can see, our simple color adjustment makes a huge difference. This is before and this is after the LUT. After making the correct adjustments, any LUT you use will give quite good results. Okay guys, this concludes our tutorial for today. I think it is a very useful software for those who are just starting or for creators who constantly produce content for social media. If you don't want to use very complicated programs, you can check it out Filmora. If you have any questions, please mention them in the comments. If you have learned anything from this video, please give it a like. Thank you for watching, take care and I will see you in the next video.